Okay, no job number yet, but I'm at the Evergreen Church here in Bothell. Just up the street to my left is where we did the CCS building. Uh, just up this road and up to the left. We did such a good job up there that uh, the people here at Evergreen saw it, liked it, and they want the same kind of thing done over here. So, um, so there's two parking lots. There's a smaller parking lot that I'm at right now off of 240th. And then if you go down this back road by this neighborhood, you get to the larger parking lot. Or you can go up the street here, head up the east side, and there's like two entrances into this large parking lot. All the red that you see is all the asphalt repairs. Uh, their asphalt repairs are because of alligator cracking. All the green is curb repairs. So I'll end up going through all of those with you here in a second. I'm just going to kind of show you this, this lot on the south end. Kind of what it looks like and why I'm doing some of these large repairs. Just because the asphalt's really like starting to deteriorate. Starting to crumble. Getting rock pieces all over the place. This right here is what the stall count and the striping is on this south lot. I'll have a count for this larger area here in a little bit. So on this aerial map, I've marked out a lot of areas that look like this where you've got a chip in the curbing. So I'm basically trying to take from joint to joint, you know, and doing 10 feet here, 10 feet there. Um, this would be one of the areas right here. This parking lot right here, it looks like a lot of employees and stuff probably park here uh, who work here. All right, but we'll have, uh, oh, we're also doing seal coating and striping uh, not just asphalt repair and curb repairs. We're going to do crack fill, seal coat, stripe. So I'm going to show you this lot. It's really, it's dirty. The cracks everywhere have moss, grass growing out of them. So it's going to need two days of power washing for sure. And it's not just to do the curbs. It's going to be to try to power wash certain areas where there's moss collection out in front of the curbing. Okay. Um, we'll definitely need to use um, uh, the uh, what is that called? The heat lance. If we've got a heat lance or one of those uh, grinder wheels on one of those walking, you know, like edgers, we definitely need to use that out here because almost every crack has grass growing out of it. Okay, so it's gonna need some it's gonna need some elbow grease for at least two days out here. To get stuff power washed and prepped and whatnot so then when we come into seal coat we're not spending all day cleaning this parking lot okay so uh you've got broken curbs like this but all down this it's i mean the aggregate's really starting to show it's just wearing down and it even kind of goes into the stall a little bit so i measured up this whole area going down to the entrance okay Crack fill, I'll give you quantities on crack fill. Seal coat will be easy to measure off the aerial map, so that won't be a problem. I don't think we've been out here before, so uh, you know, I'll have to start fresh on a measurement there. I'm gonna take you over to the other lot. Like most places, uh, this is a very quiet, closed off place, not a lot of action going on with this whole COVID stuff which is not a hoax, by the way. Um, we've got uh, plenty of uh, availability throughout the week. We don't have to do the weekend, so that's a good thing. Get to do this on a weekday. Pretty much any day of the week, too, from what I've been told. Um, I don't know when garbage day is, and I think the garbage might be over on that side. I don't think I saw it over here, but... Um, yeah, on a lot of these ends, you've got damaged curbing in multiple spots there. And you'll see on my map, I've marked all those areas in green. The worst asphalt areas are in the drive aisles, this being one of them. Um, not the worst one, but you've got like a patch here. And then you've got over there where there's a little bit of patchwork to do right here at this little drop-off zone. Then as you get farther down there in the valley down the center there's going to be some repairs to do there too the second row of stalls as you come into this entrance is where it really is taking a beating 
a lot of cars must come through here a lot of heavy vehicles it's just all damaged down the drive aisle so i pretty much included this whole drive aisle and i included a section of the stalls here and a section of the stalls over there because of the alligator cracking okay you can see it over there you can got grass growing out of it this third row it's not too bad on the high end here but down on this lower end you can see a lot of damage so i measured up this section here to be repaired i think one two three four yeah the second stall is where i started it here's your damaged curb which we need to take back to the to the joints here over in this uh this row here so from the entrance you've got one two I measured this area right here got alligator cracking going on there and then up at the north end I've got a pretty large section there and then one over here um, over on this side not a lot of curb repairs to do up that way just notice though I didn't get this curb right here so I'm gonna mark that real quick so yeah there's on that curbing there's sections like that where you got tires that have scraped off the curbs I'd like to try to fix some of those so I'm including those in the bid okay so there's 660 feet of red painted curb in here all right um, 580 A's 150 feet of crosshatch one two three four five six seven so there's seven um, there's these are 12 inch white bars um, there's seven of those so we've got 140 feet of 12 inch white stop bar there along that area and then i'll get you the stall count on everything else in here all right so to give you a stall count on this north lot 267 stalls 18 feet long but you got to factor in all that center line uh, that separates the rows, so the header line in each of these rows. We've got to add some footage into there. So you can take the stall count from here, stall count from here, and then add 160 feet for all those header lines that go through here that separate the stalls that are head to head. Okay, um, and then as far as the curb repairs go, I'm going to end up putting them in order. Um, on here so i'll probably clean this up and then uh you'll see that as i do my count on all the curbs i'm going to start from here go all the way down get all of these repairs and then i'll go from the top down get those repairs that repair those repairs and then down here i'll go from left to right and get that in there too so um You'll see that some of these aren't paver passes. They're a little smaller. So there's gonna be some hand work to do on some of this. Um, but there are some that are paver passes, especially down the drive aisles, as you can see. Okay, so there'll be a combination in there. I'll have the list written down on all the repairs. This is just for my notes right now, but uh, you can take from it if you want and see all the different sizes for this area as well as down in this area okay that says 155 by 22 by the way okay they want to get this work done this year so hopefully we can get it done as far as crack fill goes i'd say there's roughly 2500 lineal feet of crack fill in here all right uh, i think that's all i need to let you know plenty of room for staging the seal coating you know we can obviously do this in phases but it's pretty wide open. Um, any other questions, let me know.